Today's show is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Don't let big tech track what you do. Anonymize your web browsing at expressvpn.com slash Candice. Okay, so usually I bring you guys the heat in a counterpoint segment where I take on a leftist and I deliver all of the counterpoints. But today, in honor of granddad, we are going to do something different. We are going to change the segment around and call it The Point. And I'm going to share with you guys life lessons that I learned from granddad, which has shaped who I am. So let's jump right into it. First and foremost, many of you guys may have heard this if you read my book, uh, but my grandfather was very big on breakfast and he would cook us a giant Southern breakfast every single morning before school. And he always wanted us to say good morning. And on a particular morning, I remember being so tired, getting up at 5 a.m., rubbing my eyes, and you could smell breakfast, smell bacon in the morning, and I'd walk downstairs, and I'd just sit down at the table, and my grandfather would come with plates, and he'd put down a plate in front of my two sisters, in front of my brother, and he wouldn't have a plate for me. And I'd look up, and I'd go, what's going on? Why is there no plate for me? And he would just pretend he didn't see me and just keep speaking to my sisters, and I'd look up, and I'd say, granddad, why is there no plate for me? And my grandfather would say, did you guys hear something? And then I registered that I had forgotten to say good morning. It was a very big deal. You had to say good morning or you were not going to get a plate. And the second I said good morning, he'd turn around and he'd say, oh, baby, there you are. There's so good to see you. Let me get you a plate. And he'd jump up and he'd make a plate. And then that was that. I'm older now and I see the, the lesson in that. I can look back and I can understand why that was so important to him. And I think the lesson for all of us is you are not a big enough excuse. You are not a big enough excuse. We all get so caught up in ourselves and what we are going through and what we are feeling that we sometimes abandon the basics. Respect and decency are the basics. The small things matter, they add up. The girl handing you your coffee through the drive through window, the person delivering your package, those are people too. So why don't you forget about you for a second and say good morning. That's the point. Now, I really shouldn't tell this story, but I'm going to. Um, one time I was in high school. I don't even know where my grandparents were. Maybe they were in the South in North Carolina and they, they kept their house in Connecticut. And I decided that I could break into their house <laughs> through the basement, open the front door and throw a party. So in high school, I invited all my friends to my grandparents' house while they were gone, and I threw a party in their basement. And now I grew up in a generation where you would get spankings. I know it's not allowed to be said, but I grew up in that generation. And my mother got wind of this party. She showed up, and she was screaming at me. She was hitting me as I was walking out of the door. I ran out of there. I got home. I was screamed at by my mother, yelled at, things, objects were thrown at me that I, in retrospect, I might still call CPS, Child Protective Services. And I held firm because I was really stubborn. I didn't cry. And then she told me that my grandparents were going to come up and I was going to have to face them. And I had to go to their house and I looked at my grandma and my granddad. I'll never forget what they said. My granddad said, baby, if you wanted to have a party, why didn't you just ask us? And I felt so terrible and I cried and I cried and I cried hysterically because I felt like the worst person in the entire world. That situation brought forth the question, is it better to rule with fear or to rule with love? In his 16th century political treatise entitled The Prince, Machiavelli wrote that fear was a safer bet, but I beg to differ. My grandfather taught me that fear is what naturally follows love. He never raised a hand or launched an insult at me, but what I have feared most in my life is disappointing my grandfather. It has challenged me to work harder, to be kinder, if you rule with love, a respectful fear is what follows. That's the point. We'll get back to the show in just one moment. But before we do, I want to talk to you about internet security. Does it make sense that the same company who controls half of online retail also passively eavesdrops on your private conversations at home? Big tech is more powerful than most countries are, and they profit by exploiting your personal data. It's time to put a layer of protection between your online activity and these tech juggernauts. And that's why I use ExpressVPN. Every site you visit, video you watch, or message you send gets tracked and data mined. But when you run ExpressVPN on your device, the software hides your IP address, something big tech can use to personally identify you. So ExpressVPN makes your activity harder to trace and sell to advertisers. 
ExpressVPN also encrypts 100% of your internet data to keep you safe from hackers and eavesdroppers on your network. And ExpressVPN does all of this without slowing down your connection. That's why it's rated the number one VPN service by CNET and TechRadar. What I like most about ExpressVPN is how easy it is to use. You just download the app on your phone or computer, tap one button, and you're protected. Stop handing over your personal data to the big tech monopoly that mines your activity and sells your information. Protect yourself with a VPN that I trust to keep me safe online. Visit expressvpn.com slash Candice. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash Candice to get three extra months free. Go to expressvpn.com slash Candice right now to learn more. Now, when you're young, you know, you don't realize things that are a bit odd. And as I got older, my grandfather was very fast. The Owens gene were very fast, but we can sprint very quickly. My grandfather uh, was somebody that I always raced when I was a kid. And in retrospect, one day, my sisters and I were talking, and we thought, isn't it weird that granddad never let us beat him in a race? Never, not once when I was a kid, we'd race up the driveway, and he always won. And usually adults do that thing where, you know, let the kid win so they feel good about themselves. Nope, not once. Then I thought about another thing that took place when I was with my grandfather. He would take us to IHOP um, after church on Sundays, and we would have pigs in a blanket. And if the service was not good, you know, if the waiter was not paying attention, my grandfather, usually you say, oh, I'm not going to leave a tip. My grandfather would intentionally leave five cents, six cents, two cents. And he said, it's very important for the server to know that you didn't forget to tip them, but that you thought that their service was bad. I think about these, these random things, and, and I wonder what the lesson was, and now I think I know it. The lesson is do better, be better. You can be better. That's the point. I associate my grandfather with oily, greasy hands. He was always working with his hands. I mean, I can't even tell you just the amount of times he was in his shed. I don't know what he was doing in that shed, but he was always in it. And work meant so much to him. It really did. It was everything to him. And in the final days, as his memory was going, it, it really bothered him that he was no longer trusted to work. Um, and I remember him saying to me that, you know, they won't let me work. They won't let me work. And it was so upsetting to him. He just wanted to be able to contribute in some way. I have similar images of my grandmother always working around the house and uh, uh, her in the yard planting flowers. My, my grandfather and my grandmother both believed in, in hard work. And I think if anything, if I've ever taken away any lesson from him, it's that men should work with their hands. Women, you should water the home. Commit yourself diligently to watering the flower that is your home, ladies. Don't listen to society telling you that you shouldn't. I think work and diligence have a moral benefit. That's granddad's point. My husband uh, got to know my grandfather, obviously, over these last couple of years. And his favorite story about my grandfather is that day when we were testifying in Congress uh, with Ted Lieu and Jerry Nadler. And my grandfather was sitting next to my husband. And this was really the second time they had ever met. And my husband will tell you that when uh, Ted Lieu played that game where he showed an edited clip of me and made it seem as if I was endorsing a homicidal maniac and I wasn't allowed to reply because that's not how it works. They get time and they, if they don't call on you, you can't say anything. And I was sitting in the chair boiling, thinking, oh my goodness, he's going to paint me as this horrible human being, this horrible congressman, and not afford me any time to respond. And uh, my husband was texting me from behind and he was saying, calm down, calm down, because he could physically see me shaking with anger. Um, but then my husband says that he looked over to my granddad and he saw him about to get up. And my grandfather turned to him and he said, boy, you better hold me down because I'm about to charge at that man. And uh, it just, it's, it's so true of who my grandfather was. And it also makes me think of that in terms of government, like government versus my grandfather. Uh, last year, obviously notoriously for the first time, the government told us not to celebrate Thanksgiving. You know, it was, it was this idea that, you know, you, you got to protect your grandparents, do it for your grandparents. And yeah, no thanks for my granddad. He uh, got in a car and was driven up and we spent Thanksgiving together because lockdowns and government could never keep 
my grandfather away from me. Um, it, our last Thanksgiving, and thank goodness we had those moments, you know, were, was spent together. And I think that in realizing that my grandfather, in a way, has always won against the government, he has always stood up tall against the government, there is a lesson in that. And the lesson is family first, family last, family always. In the scheme of everything that is going on in the world, family should always represent to each and every one of us the first, the last, and the greatest point. Thank you guys so much for giving me the opportunity to share these wonderful points from my grandfather, and I hope that they are as impactful for you as they have always been for me. We're going to share them all over on our Candace Show socials, so be sure to check them out and share with your friends and family. Thanks for joining me on this segment of Candace. If you like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel and ring the bell to get notifications on new videos. If you wanna watch the full show, become a Daily Wire member. Go to dailywire.com slash subscribe, use code Candace for 25% off your new membership.